Hello and welcome back and today I want to talk about two four bay NASs that have a hell of a lot in common. I want to talk about the new Locker Store 4 and how it compares with the new QNAP to 453D. These are two NAS solutions that have been released in summer 2020 and what a summer it is and both of them arrive with great hardware. Arguably the two best four bays in their flagship generations Although it may not be the most powerful out there with your i3s and your Xeons and stuff like that, it's worth highlighting that in terms of mid-range, flagship, SMB and prosumer users, these two are almost bloody unbeatable. They both arrive with an Intel Celeron processor, the Intel J4125 quad-core 2.0 to 2.7 gigahertz processor with DDR4 memory, 2400 megahertz, 4 gig inside each that can be upgraded to 8 gig both arriving with 2.5 GBE there on the rear. So again, you have got network connections there surpassing that of traditional gigabit and giving you up to 5 GBE with link aggregation. So between 250 and 500 megabytes per second throughput to these storage drives. They both are four bay NASes, although it is worth highlighting that the Acer store is metal and the QNAP is plastic in design and that is reflected a lot in the architecture of these devices with metal spring-loaded trays and metal um, uh, and un, um, unlockable plastic trays on the QNAP so between these two devices you can see a lot of architectures got into the metal chassis of the Acer store but it's also worth highlighting that if you use my enterprise level hard drives they will be a little bit noisy with the clicks and the hums being amplified by the metal that said temperatures on metal chassis are generally better controlled because of the heat dissipation that a metal chassis brings to the table whereas a plastic chassis doesn't really have that it has to improve its internal cooling with more vents all the way around to ensure that the internal temperatures can be kept as cool as possible but it's the way both of these systems use all the hardware architecture inside that makes all the difference they are incredibly similar in a number of ways insofar as they've both got hdmi 2.0 a and usb ports on them that support kvm keyboard video mouse as well as surveillance with hdmi keyboard and mouse running an arcade server if you want to run like retro arch and a few controllers connected you can do that they've both got support of like windows virtual machines and android and ubuntu vms both of them have got a linux station or ubuntu deployment uh, vm tool although it's worth mentioning that acer stores apps and you will hear this a lot during this video use a lot of third-party tools rather than their own now there are reasons for and against that and i know a number of you out there will buy nas with almost no intention of using its own software and graphical user interface on day one you'll use it to set the device up and maybe the odd ad hoc access but what you're really using is your third party tools on your pc your mac your android your tablet your ipad your whatever you are using your software your tools to interact with this mapped network drive or this internet cloud-based drive and i get that but it's worth highlighting that when you buy the qnap you do get better first party tools both of them have got the same internal hardware with regard to CPU and memory. Both have got the same network connectivity in that HDMI output. So it's how the software utilizes it. Now, the Acer Store does have some good first party software and looks good, sounds good, streams good. That YouTube streaming application they've been talking about, as well as lots of cloud based backup tools, as well as NAS to cloud, NAS to NAS, NAS to USB, and lots of other ways in which you can back up your files via rsync. Uh, two-way sync, one-way sync, RTRR, real-time remote replication, even cloud-managed backups directly to this device. But the QNAP first-party software, such as Hybrid Mount, uh, which allows you to bolt on cloud storage so it has the appearance internally of a logical local drive. Virtual JBOD that allows you to do that in reverse. Then you've got Hyper, Hybrid Backup Sync 3, which is just a great one-portal backup tool for all of your backups overall. On top of that... There's an AI photo recognition tool in the form of QMaggie that will allow you to back up multiple, uh, sorry, not back up, uh, to view multiple albums of at your discretion and allow you to scroll through you know, years and years of photos using AI photo recognition to see photos, places, uh, things, all of that built into that software. <clears throat> Same goes with surveillance. The surveillance tool for the Acer Store platform known as Surveillance Center is very good, but it's a little rudimentary in 2020. The QNAP1 has surveillance station, which again is almost identical uh, to that of Acer Store, 
but it also arrives with QBR Pro, a far more resource intensive app, sure, but with more camera licenses included and just a better user interface overall. It's the better surveillance tool between them. There's even the first party VM tool in the form of Virtualization Station that allows you to uh, download and deploy multiple VMs from their VM store, as well as a Windows VM directly from user interface in about three clicks. Same for an Ubuntu uh, version 18 VM in about five clicks, you can have that VM deployed. It's not as simple as on the Acer store. It is easy and it does use a lot of third party tools to do it. And that's kind of the point because the Acer store, although it's a 50-50 split between hardware and software in the locker store, and it is a really good NAS for that price tag that they're near enough identical prices, barely 10 or 20 quid between them. This is still a NAS where it has less focus on the software and more focus on the hardware. Case in point, if we look at the rear of these two NASs, we can see one big change of direction between them. Now, hopefully you've spotted it. If you haven't, this device has got a PCIe slot and this doesn't. This QNAP's PCIe slot allows you to add 10 gigabit Ethernet, NVMe SSD cache internally, combo cards that have both, 5 GBE, 2.5 GBE, Wi-Fi 6 network cards, and more. You can attach lots of different PCIe upgrade cards to this device, which is good, and of course you have to spend a bit more money to do it, but still nevertheless, that sense of upgradability is quite useful. The, uh, sorry, the Locker Store 4 doesn't have a PCIe slot. There is an internal PCIe backplane, but it's being used by an M2 SSD cache bay, and that is an NVMe caching bay. So there are two NVMe bays inside this device, which when you stick an NVMe inside, or two of them in the right RAID, will vastly improve your internal operation speeds with small files. Look at a lot of my NVMe caching tests with NAS and you'll see what I mean. Between these two devices, this seemingly prioritizes external speeds with this giving both a good leg up, but no 10 GB option, which may put some of you off. Between the two of them, you are getting a great hardware solution in network attached storage between them. They've both got three years of warranty as well. They've both got expandability options in terms of storage, although you can attach more expansions to the QNAP. The Locker Store has more third-party apps. It's possible to install a lot more apps that have been removed. There's a Netflix app, there's a Kodi app. There's more uh, gaming emulation apps than there are on the QNAP, with the majority of the apps I've just mentioned having to be downloaded third-party from the QNAP Club Center. So there's a lot more priority towards those first-party apps on the QNAP by comparison, but it's also worth highlighting a lot of those first-party apps are incredible. QMaggie, Multimedia Console, um, the Hyper Hyperware Backup Tool, Hyper Protector. Um, then you've got a lot of their kind of middle range tools like the um, Hybrid Mount and Virtual JPod that we've already talked about there. Then you've got QDDupe with the duplication to make a lot of space and intelligent caching there in the background with the compression. There are lots of things it can do. And the, if that software sounds appealing to you, particularly the Hybrid Backup Sync 3, this may err you for it. But if you are going to stick rigidly to your first party apps. If you're going to stick to the apps you know how to use or you're a gamer that you are looking for a robust storage solution where you don't want to muck around with their software, you just want something to shut up and do the job, the Lock Store is going to do a very good job for you with that ability of adding NVMEs internally, which for gaming files and a lot of those cab Steam files, you will see the benefit between them. But this has been the Locker Store 4 versus the 453D. I hope I've helped you guys choose between them. And if I have, let me know and chuck me a like. Click subscribe if you want to learn more. I'm sorry I'm sweating like an absolute PIG here, but it is bad enough and very hot in this studio. Hopefully we'll get through this together, won't we? Do visit the links to NAS Compare below and visit the guys at span.com as they can help you choose the right NAS for you the very first time. But otherwise, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.